Taco Bell used to make the double-decker taco, and I was a huge fan. Well, since they don't make it anymore, we'll make our own. But instead of regular size, we're making a big one. It's gonna be great. The double-decker taco is a genius idea, and it was a soft outer flour tortilla, a layer of refried beans, a crunchy inner shell, and then the seasoned beef, lettuce, tomato, cheese. That was it. Could eat a thousand of them back in the day, but they don't make it anymore. So we want to make our own, but we're making a large format version because if a little bit is good, a lot has to be insane. Two things to do really, refried beans and the beef. Start with the beans. Since uh, refried beans often begin with lard, I thought I'd use a lard-ish like thing. I have some bacon in here, not traditional, but certainly delicious. It's getting mostly done. And as the gardeners ramp up their motors next door, I'll add our next ingredient, a little diced red onion, could be white onion, could be yellow. We are nothing if not inclusive when it comes to the color of our onions. So let them soften up just a little bit. And as it's softening nicely, let's not waste an opportunity to add some garlic. And that will look like this. Slam a couple big cloves. Mix around. So of course the bacon and the bits of onion are gonna give our refried beans like a little texture and that's not a bad thing. It is if you're a smooth refried person, but I like to change it up a bit. And right when the garlic becomes super fragrant in the air, we'll add two cans of pinto beans. I've poured most of the juice off to be saved for when I want to smooth them out a bit. And we mix. Now we're just warming, getting everybody covered in that nice bacon grease. A little bit of juice from the beans in here, the onion, the garlic. Now, Max, we season. We start with our favorite cumin, followed up by a little smoked paprika, a little onion powder to finish off with some Mexican oregano. And we mix again. Oops, my bad. I forgot salt and pepper. We'll give a nice big pinch of that. Because beans are really bland, and the more bland something is, the more salt it requires. Now's the point that you can start to mash a bit if you want. Back of the spoon, potato masher, whatever you like. We're gonna mash maybe half of this. Texture, smoothness, the whole thing is glorious. But they're gonna be dry, so let's put back in a little bit of their bean juice and mix that in. Now we're getting there, so continue to mash. Continue to stir, leave it on the heat. The heat will help break down the beans a little bit. We'll come back to this in a bit, but right now let's swap pans here to here and let's start on our beef. Thank you Vessi Footwear for partnering with me on this video. And here's why I like Vessi and you're gonna see them in a second. I have two restaurants. We shoot our YouTube episodes three times a week. In short, that means I'm standing, walking, moving, on my feet all the time, and the comfort of my shoes is ridiculously important. Now, Vessi has come into my life and Max and Chance's life in a very important way. So the boys and I have become fans of the Vessi everyday shoe and their athleisure style. With all the benefits of Vessi's innovative features, look, they're sandproof, slush proof, slip proof, which means they're perfect for me in the kitchen. They keep my feet totally dry and check this out as evidence. I put some paper towel in the toe of the shoe that will now come out completely dry. Yeah, you just saw it, 100% waterproof. They're 100% vegan. That means the shoe is comfortable and breathable, keeps you cool in summer and warm in winter and God knows everybody knows that's important. The boys and I think they're stylish, comfortable, affordable, breathable, cruelty-free because they're vegan, which means you could eat them if you got really hungry. Okay, kidding. And 100% waterproof. Honestly, my favorite part besides the comfort and the look. 
and the affordability. Okay, I guess I like everything. Here's all you need to do. Right now, Vessi Footwear is offering you $25, $25 off all styles of shoes. Just click the link below and use my code to get $25 off your Vessi shoes. You're gonna be loving life, like we all are. So we had an idea. Uh, my new book, Sam the Cooking Guy Recipes with Intentional Leftovers, available at a bookstore near you soon at Amazon for pre-order. Go to thecookingguy.com, find the page that you can order, it doesn't matter. We've decided we're gonna give one of these away to a subscriber every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So if you leave a comment, uh, be sure to check it because that's where we'll let you know, right? Right. Right. And then you could be the owner of this joyful, joyful? This most excellent book. And while we're talking about uh, excellence, I hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the uh, notification bell. So you stay on top of us. That came out the wrong way. I, I think you know what I mean. So our beef begins with a little oil in our pan, avocado oil. Courtesy of my very own Sam the Cooking Guy chosen avocado squeezy bottle. And now we'll add our ground beef. And because I don't know how much this is going to take, we'll use a start with a couple of pounds. 80 20. 80% 80 fat, 20% lean. Nope. 20% fat, 80% lean. <laughs> I can see already that's just a crazy amount. But that's good. More is better than less, right? Yeah. Break this kid up. You'd probably prefer if I didn't have a noisy thing, right? Uh, yeah, I hate that. It's cooking, bud. Sorry, Max just had a little bit of a crying fit over me talking and breaking up the ground beef at the same time. It's fine when I do this. It's not fine when I talk about the ground beef and do this. That's okay. So as we begin to get some color on our beef, we can begin to season our beef. And for this, we'll be using the usual suspects. More oregano, more cumin, and more onion powder. And of course, a big glunk of salt and pepper. And uh, we mix. Quietly, not talking. We're just waiting for this. Sorry, Max, we're just waiting for the color to become all mostly gray. I'm gonna throw in one last ingredient, and it's uh, soy sauce. And I know people are thinking that's a whack thing to do. It's gonna taste like, uh, I don't know, Chinese food, and it's not. It's just gonna amplify the flavor of the beef and make this, oh, incredible. Look, I put soy in my carne asada, and I believe I have some of the best carne asada around. If you haven't tried it, you should make it. Oh yes, I pissed off a lot of Mexican grandmothers who thought that's not the thing to do. But I'm saying it's exactly the thing to do. And with our beef ready and our beans ready, I'd say let's get some magic happening. Time for the tortilla. Tortillas are two. The soft flour outside that looks like this guy and the crispy inside. So my mind starts going, all right, what do we do? Do I cook it in oil? We did another thing with some small tortillas in oil and got them shaped and that was fine. Crispy tacos, but they were small. This is not fitting any deep fryer I have. And I wanted the shape already to be there because I know once it's crispy, if it's like this and I do this, it's gonna go and I didn't want that. If it was too tight and I opened it up, it would go and I don't want that. So I, I had this idea. Could I find something that I could drape the tortilla over and put into the oven? And I found it. This piece of pipe that came from a, like a bathroom uh, corner shower shelving unit. It was longer, but it unscrews. And I thought, is it possible this piece could fit? Perfect. Because if it did, it is perfect. So here's what I did. I took one of the tortillas, I gently oiled the outside to help with the crisp factor, and then I laid the tortilla on top. I hung this from the side rack holding uh, uh, bars in the oven, 325 degrees for about 13, 14 minutes. And after 13, 14 minutes, you have this. Listen.
hey, 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 you're a B, go on, B. So Jerry Seinfeld was in a B movie, you remember that? He, that was his movie. The B was, hey, I'm a B, yeah, get out of here. Yeah, like star in it, that was his movie. That was his movie. So, so this is it, look. Out comes the rod. <laughs> Max. It's perfect. That's what she says, I, I oh. set that, I couldn't have laid that up any better for That's you. That's really gross, jeez. Sorry. <laughs> so this is it. And now we can build, because this is ready, the beans are ready, and the, the beef is ready. But here, before I do, i got to taste both of them. Gardeners are ready, too. Gardeners are ready. So the beef, I'm going to tell you what is going to make this extra special good. A, the soy. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what's going to make this extra special good. What made this extra special good? First was the soy, and it, it won't taste like that. But second was I pulled it before it got too dry. You want to keep a bucket of that in your fridge at all times. And the beans, the beans that now look like this. I, I know to some, my wife, by the way, this would be a disgusting bowl of horribleness. But to me, this, with the bacon and the onion, is going to be... Out of this world. Thank you. Nice job, everybody. Oh, wait, that was me. All right, so let's build this uh, biatch, shall we? We warm the bottom tortilla first. The tortilla goes on. Remember, I always say this. All we're doing is warming it, just to make it slightly more pliable. That's it. Just warming. And when it's ready, we build. First thing up would be our beans. And we need a decent amount to keep this baby together. Oh, this is making me so happy right now. It's just bringing back the old days when you could just drive up and get one. But no, somebody decided it wasn't worthy of being on their menu. Let's take it off. Let's put on a version that has cheese in between the tortillas. Why would anybody want refried beans? That's ridiculous. No, it's not Taco Bell. It's not ridiculous at all. It was freaking delicious. Now I'm forced to make my own, which by the way, will be about 6,000 times better than yours. So. so I'm actually winning, but I'm still pissed. A little bit more touch up over here. Fill in the gaps. All right, you ready for the crunch? Yeah. Let's do this. You know what Chance called the, those beans earlier? What? The glue. Said, so what are we using for the glue? It's kind of right, actually. So here we go. And now I'm not going to fold up the sides yet because right now I've just got to worry about how I get the ground beef in here. So give me a sec. Let's figure this out. So we're going like this. And you need a lot of it. <laughs> this is crazy. Three pounds, four pounds, five pounds. I mean, it's got to be to scale, right? You can't have like a quarter of an inch of ground beef across the bottom. That would be wrong. It'd be so wrong. Terribly wrong. All right. Large format needs larger quantities, ladies and gentlemen. Jerry the Seinfeld, if he was the B, would say, Sam's right. You need larger quantities. Jerry the Seinfeld. <laughs> Jerry the B. You know, I fear I'm risking now. Putting too much stuff in the middle and expanding these walls to the point where they bust. Better not do that. Well, but no, but I have to have, there's lettuce, tomato, and cheese, and that doesn't take up much room. I think room. you might have enough beef. You might have too much beef now. You don't know that. It's quite a lot of beef. But I want to come up to the top, though. No, the beef does not come up to not the top. Not the beef, but the other stuff. Okay, well. What do you think I'm doing? Uh, okay, open up the taco. Show me, get the taco from Taco Bell. Let's open it up. Okay, so here, we got one. I think I know what I'm talking Let's about. See, put it right, okay. Do you see how high the beef goes on that one? Uh, li listen, just because they cheap out like that doesn't mean that I have to. Fine. I've now got lettuce, tomato, and cheese. And by the way, this is not a real double decker. This is that one that's supposed to have cheese in between. Do you see any cheese? Oh, look, there's one piece. There's another piece. Guess who dictated the amount of cheese? Alan. Alan, Alan, Alan. <laughs> Come on. Before the lettuce and tomato layer, I want to do one thing. I just want to squeeze some 
lime juice right on top of this. It'll just sort of sink its way down, run its way through like a like water finding its own level in rocks and add extra flavor. So now the lettuce. Good so far? It's looking very nice. Now the tomatoes. Sorry, pardon my hand, I just got a <laughs> it's all coming together. One last thing. What would that be? Cheese. That's right. And the cheese will look like this. I have cilantro. Would you like cilantro? No. It's not on there. All right, folks. Here we go. The last component. Oh, the, li the juice from the beef <laughs> Is insane. Wow. Front, Holy. Get all the way up to the front. Yes. And look at what we've got here. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, we're going to get the scale because this is very heavy and gorgeous. And just let me show you. Ready? Mine. Theirs. I mean, there is a difference. This is the party double decker. Let's take a bite. All right. So this weighs... I'm just, I'm just holding it. What is that? 40, 42 ounces? Ah, shit, it's falling out. 43 ounces. 45, 40, 48 would be three pounds. So it's just shy of three pounds, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus. Can I take a bite, please? Not what I was expecting. Well, there's only one thing left to do. Just get on it. I like this side. This is just dumb. The, the crunch is the key. Um, this pool made it happen. Damn it. It's just like theirs, but bigger and better. This is an excellent example of the sum of the parts are greater than the whole. Remember that? Somebody wrote us to help us out with that. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for being there. I'm not saying you have to make a three-pound Taco Bell double-decker. But these components in this size would be spectacular. All right, see ya. Good Lord. <laughs>